Praise God. Amen. It is a privilege uh, to be here tonight. Um, great job, Nemi. Um, and that song, wonderful. A very good song. Uh, even if you couldn't sing that song, it would still be good. It's just it's powerful. Amen. Um, yeah, Jesus rose from the graves true in government. I'm telling you, man, this, you know, praise God, man. Very good drama skit. I uh, enjoy that. Um, hey, we're happy to be here. My wife and I, uh, Victoria, our two kids, uh, my and Preston here uh, celebrating uh, this Easter Saturday with you. Um, also, our three kids here as well. We adopted these three. <laughs> Uh, you know, one of them was lost in Nigeria, the other one was somewhere in the Czech Republic at sea, and we brought him here to Canada. This one was in Trinidad, and uh, but, you know, they're here tonight. Um, and so, if you have your Bibles, Romans chapter 8. Uh, Romans chapter 8, if you have your Bibles. It's always a wonderful pr- privilege uh, preaching the Word of God. It's not always easy knowing what to preach um, and uh, want to communicate that effectively so people can be helped and so people can be ministered onto. Um, I, I think on your flyer it says reborn to witness. I was asking your pastor, you know, I mean, what, what, what does that mean? Like, what are you doing? Or, you know, what do you want me to preach? And, and uh, you know, it's talking about people have questions and witnessing. And so, okay, I'm like, okay, cool. I mean, I didn't. I didn't listen about any of that. I wrote my sermons. <laughs> Romans 8, chapter 11, <laughs> resurrection power. Uh, I mean, I do appreciate the invite. Uh, Jelson and Sherdy, thank you so much for the invitation. Um, read with me, or don't, just listen to me. Amen. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, and just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this, this same spirit living within you. I want to talk to you about uh, resurrection power tonight, and that last song goes so well with this, with this sermon. Um, the biggest event that ever took place in history was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is why we're here this weekend. As a matter of fact, this is why we're even saved, why we're even living for God. You know, a lot of times we celebrate the the death of Jesus. We talk about Jesus dying for our sins and him paying the price for our sins. We talk about that a lot when we witness to sinners. We let them know that, listen, Jesus died for you. He nails, he nailed them, they nailed them on the cross for your sins, that your sins can be forgiven, that you can be made whole and healed. And it doesn't matter how bad your sins are, that he died for your sins. There is no sin that Jesus Christ cannot forgive. And and we preach this and we talk about that. And all that is true. But I want to tell you something, that the resurrection is just as important as the death of Jesus Christ. Right? It's just as important. And, and, and Jesus dying is only half the gospel message. The other half is that he rose from the dead. 1 Corinthians 15, 17. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless and you are still guilty of your sins. And so Paul is writing, he's saying, listen, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is it's absolutely useless. And so you're going to think about this because here are these men. Uh, Paul, he had an encounter with Jesus um, on the road to Damascus. Um, and so he had this experience, this conversion, um, a powerful conversion. He wasn't, uh, you know, he wasn't converted when Jesus was a. Uh, was alive, it's after Jesus died, but he understood something, that it's more than just the death of Jesus Christ, it's also about the resurrection, and he's saying, I'm going to give my life, I'm going to give everything that I am, and who I am, why? Because Jesus Christ rose from the dead, and so he believed this with all his heart, and this revelation, this truth, transformed who he was. And so it's not just his death, but it's a death and resurrection because the resurrection proves that he is who he is. 
Because if he only died and didn't resurrect, how do we know that our sins are forgiven? How do we know that he could overcome the grave? How do we know that he could overcome sins? And the fact that he rose from the grave, we could believe him that our sins are forgiven. We could believe that it's going to prepare a place for us. We could believe that when we die, that we're going to spend eternity with him. Why? Because he rose from the dead. Our text says, just as God raised Christ from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. One of the things that you and I look forward to as Christians is the, is, is the resurrection of the dead. Right? We look forward to, you know, if the Lord tarries, we're, we're going to die. We're all going to die. We look forward to the resurrection. Kind of float in to meet Jesus in the air, and you're looking at all your sinner friends. I told you guys. I told you. Remember that time I gave the flyer at the mall? I told you you should have been here. First Thessalonians 4.16, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And so if we die before Jesus Christ comes back, when he comes back the second time, we're going to rise first. Right? We're going to come out of the grave, man. It's going to be a marvelous thing. It's going to be wonderful. Right? And, 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 and this is for all believers. And death is just a comma. It's not a period. Believers will rise, will be given a heavenly body that doesn't get sick. It doesn't get old. There will be no tears anymore. No more sadness. No more temptation. Can you say amen? We live with the Lord for all of eternity. And what a glorious day that will be. Jesus Christ is our eternal hope. But the power of salvation, the power of the resurrection is not just for the future. It's not just for eternity, but it's for now. The text says that the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. I want you to think about that for a moment. God's spirit lives in us. I know we know this already, right? That when we gave our lives to Jesus Christ, uh, his spirit uh, lives in us. I know we know this, uh, but uh, sometimes we need a reminder. And that reminder is that that same spirit that rose or raised Jesus from the dead, rather, is alive and at work in our lives. And what this tells me is that when God is dealing with us, when he's working with us, he doesn't limit his power or his ability in our life. We know that God is all-powerful. He spoke the world into existence. We know that he can do what he wants, when he wants. He parted the Red Sea. He protected the three Hebrew boys in the fire furnace. He protected Daniel in the lion's den. He provided manna in the wilderness. He fed the multitudes. Jesus walked on water, cast out demons, healed the sick, raised the dead. His power is limitless. And I want you to understand this because this is the same power that is at work in our lives. We think that God somehow, you know, he supercharges, right? So he supercharges and then he parts the Red Sea. He supercharges and then, you know, Jesus walks in water, so, you know, and then he fed the multitudes. But when it comes to work in our lives, it's like, you know, it's like 10%. His power is depleted. It's not like us, right? That God is working, that same power that he used to create the earth, that same power he used to raise Jesus from the dead, it is that same power that lives in us. He's using the same energy, so to speak, on you and I that he used on Moses and the parting of the Red Sea. 
There's nothing in my life that the resurrected power of Jesus Christ can't handle. There's nothing that I'm going through. There's nothing that I'm dealing with. There is no sin. There is no problem. There is no sickness. There's nothing that is too big, too hard, or too difficult for God. Why? Because of the resurrected power of Jesus Christ. That same power that moved the stone, that rolled away the stone, but that power that rose him from the dead lives inside of you and I. Listen to what Ephesians 1 verse 18, 21 says. says, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called. His holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible Incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power, the same. This is not different. It is not less. It is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Paul is writing to the Ephesian Christians, and Paul said, I'm praying that you will understand something. I'm praying that you understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe. Because this is the same power. It is the same. It is not less. And when you think about God working in your life, you need to think about the resurrection power because it is the same power that raised Christ from the dead. It is not less mighty. It is just as mighty. It didn't fade with time. That same power that God used to raise Christ from the dead over 2,000 years ago, it is the same power that's working in your situation. It is the same power that's delivering you from your sins. It is the same power that's helping you with your addiction. It is the same power that's going to help you to overcome everything the devil may throw your way. It is that same power. It is not less. God is consistent. It is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. I want to tell you something. When it comes to us, God didn't, uh, he didn't give us uh, the raw end of the deal. When it came to us, uh, he gave us the same power that he gave Jesus Christ. And Paul says, I want you to understand this truth. Because it's possible to be a Christian and not understand this truth that the unlimited power of God is working in our lives. You know, the greatest miracle is the miracle of changed lives. It's the miracle of changed lives. It's to take someone that was once dead in their sins and make them born again. You know, if you've been a sinner, you know what sin is like. You know what it is to sin. You know, some people, they grew up in church. They're good people. They're nice people. Praise God. They were protected from the world and the mess of the world and the sin of the world. But, you know, if you are a real hardcore sinner, when you get saved, there's going to come a moment. You're going to look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, who the heck is that? Because there's such a difference. There's such a transformation that took place within you as you think about your past life and the things that you used to do and who you are now. Like, who, who is that? And especially the longer you live for God, you know, you've been living for God for 10, 15, 20 years. You're in ministry. Some will be pastor and pastor's wives. I mean, you know, you have kids now, grandkids. You're going to look back on who, who you used to be and what you used to be. And you're going you're gonna to shake your head. How did I get here? The miracle power. is that same power that rose Christ from the dead that takes us out of our sins and converts us and make us into a new man and woman of God. 
you know, when you're physically dead, you can't fight back. And so it's, you know, God could, I mean, he made Adam and Eve from the dirt, uh, and there's no fighting. But it's, there's, you know, when you're alive physically, but you're spiritually dead, we fight. We kick. I want to tell you something. It takes a lot more energy to make us born again than to make a dead man come alive. Right? And you and I are, were spiritually dead. And God, the miracle of God is that he saves us. Yet, as we go through life, we can forget this. As we experience trials, temptations, setbacks in life, we can start to think that somehow God is limited. How many people you go through life and you start to think, you, you know, been saved for a while, this thing that you're going through in life, and you start to think, you start to, maybe you don't even say it, but you're thinking it, can God really help me in this? Pastor, I don't know what to do. Can God, I don't know, I don't know if I believe God could help me through this. I don't know if I believe God could make this right. I don't know if God can. I'm here to tell you that he can tonight. He can heal. He can deliver. He can set us free because it is that same power that rose Christ from the dead. In all the, all the years of human history, science cannot bring the dead back to life. Nothing can. All the, quote, energy in the world, all the electricity in the world, all the money in the world, nothing can. Only God can. That power. And as a Christian, you don't have to fall into the same sin over and over again because that same power that rose Christ from the dead lives in you. You can be set free. You can be delivered. Because that same power is inside of us. That same power that saved you is the same power that keeps you. See, God wants to give us life. Jesus said, I came that they might have life and have it to the full or have it more abundantly. Maybe there are things in your life that's dying. There's a resurrection power. God wants to bring them back to life. The devil's all about death, while God is all about life. One of the best things about being a born-again believer is the ability to do great things we could never do on our own because of the new life that God gives us. One of those great things is the ability to influence other people for Jesus Christ. We can't talk about the power of God without talking about his power to save. Jesus told the disciples to wait here in Jerusalem until they receive power from on high. The power that Jesus was talking about was the power of the Holy Spirit. And the purpose of that power wasn't just for themselves, but it was for others. It was for them to go in the power of the Holy Spirit so others can be saved. They were going to go, they were going to evangelize, they were going to go, they were going to preach. God was going to speak through them. God was going to demonstrate miracles through their lives. And it's the same power. That, listen, the power of God didn't die with Jesus. That same power was with them. And God was using them to transform people's lives. And when you read the Bible, especially the book of Acts, you're seeing powerful conversion. You're seeing powerful testimonies of what God is doing in the lives and hearts of people. How he's changing them through the witness of the disciples because of that power. See, resurrection power means that Christ helps us to reach people who seem unreachable. To change minds that seem to be unchangeable and to bring new understanding to people who are hopelessly confused by the world's way of thinking. As Christians, we're part of this, the most powerful movement on planet Earth. 
We're part of the most powerful movement on planet Earth. There's nothing as exciting as this in the world today. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. You could try the clubs. You could try, I mean, you can't because it's pandemic. But you could... <laughs> Everything and anything, the alcohol, the, the drugs, you could you try it all. I want to tell you something. At the end of the day, you're going to be empty. There's going to be a void in your heart and in your life like her sister testified about. Why? Because Jesus is the best thing on planet Earth. And you and I have to believe that. We must believe that. And if we believe that and live that, there's something in us that is so excited that we want to share this to others the people that we want people to know Jesus is the best thing the church is the best thing that's happening on planet earth there's nothing else like this it's made possible because Jesus rose from the dead and we can partner with him not only to bring change to our lives but to bring change to anyone else who will believe. The greatest thing you could ever do with your life is give someone the gospel. I don't know where I would be if someone ever preached to me. None of us know. But there's power in the gospel message. Why? Because we serve our resurrected Savior. Bow your heads with me. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed real quick in reverence to God tonight. You're here. You're not saved. I want to tell you something. Jesus is alive and that power that rose Jesus from the dead is here tonight to change and transform your life that same power could get inside of you. It could change you. There's no situation that you're in that God cannot deliver you from. There's no sin that you commit that his power cannot forgive you. That same power is here tonight. I wonder how many people you're here and you're not saved, you're not right with God, you're not living for Jesus Meaning that God is not living inside of you. You haven't surrendered your heart to him. I'm not asking you if you're religious or if you attend church once in a while. I'm asking you, are you born again? Have you allowed the spirit of God to come inside of you and bring a lasting change, genuine transformation? If you haven't done that, I want to tell you something. You can do that tonight. You're here tonight and you say, Pastor, I'm not saved. And I want to tap into this power. I want God to touch me. I want him to change me. I want him to transform me. If you're here tonight and God is speaking to you tonight, I want to give your life to Jesus. Lift your hands so we could pray for you. Quickly lift it up. Just lift it up and put it back down. I'm not, a, I'm not a Christian. I'm not right with God. But tonight, I want to get right with Jesus. I want to live for him. I want to serve him with all my heart. I want to be changed and transformed. The music, the testimony, the skit, all of that ministered to me tonight. And I don't want to leave this place the same way that I came. I want to be changed. If that is you and God is speaking to you tonight, lift your hands. Just lift it up so I could pray for you. Maybe you're backslidden at one time. You're walking with God, but you find yourself away from him tonight. You want to come back to Jesus. Lift your hands quickly all over this place. God is speaking to you. He's helping you tonight. Praise God. Now I want to encourage every Christian in here tonight. That same power. It is that same power that was working in your life. When you're thinking of quitting, when you're thinking of giving up, it is that same power. When you're thinking, oh, it's so hard, I can't overcome this, I can't get over this, it is that same power. Temptation is too difficult. It is that same power.
power. When you look within yourself and see how messed up you are, you're not sure if God could use you, if God could help or change you. It is that same power that rose Christ from the dead that's living in you and is working in you. It is changing you and is molding you into a man and a woman of God. It is that same power. Don't you give up on God because I want to tell you something, that the same power that he used to raise Christ from the dead is the same power he's using to use it to change and transform your life and make you into the man and the woman that he's called you to be. That same power. Tonight we're going to stand. Find a place and then pray. And when God is speaking to you, you want to pray. You do that tonight. You stand and